This winter could be one of the craziest winters in years. With El Nino rapidly fading, the atmosphere is gearing up for massive shifts that could unleash polar vortex disruptions, bitter arctic blasts, powerful snowstorms, and even severe weather outbreaks. Unlike the quieter winters that we've seen recently, this winter has the potential to bring far more volatile conditions and intensity across the United States. To understand why this winter could be so extreme, we need to talk about what's happening in the Pacific Ocean. Changes in ocean temperatures in the Pacific Ocean create what's known as ENZO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, and it's the biggest driver of winter weather in the United States. ENZO patterns have three distinct phases, all of which bring various impacts to the United States during the winter, one of which is El Nino, which occurs when the Pacific water temperatures are warmer than average. This strengthens the southern jet stream and shifts it across the southern United States. That typically means wetter conditions and more frequent storms in the south, flooding risks along the Gulf Coast and California coast, and a milder and drier winter for the north. It also tends to limit Arctic outbreaks in the Midwest and the Northeast. On the other hand, La Nina is the exact opposite. La Nina happens with colder Pacific water temperatures. This pushes the jet stream farther north, which makes the northern tier colder and snowier than average, while the south runs warmer and drier. La Nina winters often bring more winter storms to the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies and they allow for more frequent Arctic blasts to spill into the Midwest and Northeast. And there's one category that is sandwiched between the two, and that is what we call the neutral stage. Neutral conditions occur when the Pacific waters sit near average. In these years, ENZO doesn't strongly tip the balance one way or another, which means other climate drivers can take a bigger role on what's going to happen during the winter. Now, this winter will be extremely different from the winters we've had recently, as we are not expecting a strong La Nina or El Nino presence. Instead, Instead, the Pacific Ocean should be at a neutral state with a slight lean towards La Nina conditions. And that makes this winter extremely difficult to predict, because in a neutral state, we typically see a lot of variability with sharp swings between warm and cold, along with the potential for big storms. The last time we had a setup like this was 12 years ago. This was back in the winter of 2013 and 2014. Now, many of you likely remember the winter of 2013 into 2014. This is because we had several Arctic blasts as many strong cold fronts swept across the Midwest and the Northeast, surging very cold weather out of Canada, bringing big winter storms. Additionally, no hurricanes made landfall during the 2013 hurricane season in the United States, which so far this year, we've seen no hurricanes make landfall. Now, not saying that's not going to happen, but there are some similarities as we did have a very suppressed hurricane season in 2013, and so far in 2025, this hurricane season has been suppressed by high amounts of wind shear. Additionally, steering patterns in the Atlantic Ocean Ocean have not been favorable for landfalling hurricanes. And what made the winter of 2013 even crazier is that several storm tracks favored winter storms along the East Coast, which increased the risk for snow and ice events across the entire Northeast. A neutral weather pattern with a slight leaning towards La Nina typically leads to a very volatile environment. We will likely see multiple big temperature swings across the United States, in addition to several winter storms. Now, though the winter of 2013 and 2014 won't just repeat itself this year, this is one of the closest matches that we can compare what this winter could look like in comparison to 2013 and 2014. So let's talk more about the temperature patterns that occurred during this particular winter, and we had overarching cold air that really sunk across most of the United States during this winter because of how many Arctic blasts came out of Canada. And notice, back over in the Midwest, we had well below average temperatures in these areas. Additionally, we had below average temperatures that reached as far south as the Gulf Coast. Now, that doesn't mean the entire winter was below average, but generally and overall, that winter was below average for temperatures. The only exception to this was Florida and also the West Coast, where we experienced above average temperatures, which prevailed across most of the winter. Now, despite it being very cold in the 2013 winter, we actually had a very dry winter for a large chunk of the lower 48, beginning with most of the Great Plains, where below average rainfall and snowfall was observed, even though we had some impactful winter storms that didn't necessarily accumulate a ton of snow during that entire winter. Now, back along the West Coast, we had well below average rainfall, which led to a big drought across California, Nevada, and even back into Oregon. There were some areas, though, that did experience above average rain and snowfall, which included areas like the Great Lakes, where we had big lake effect snow events. Additionally, the East Coast had above average rainfall, anywhere from Connecticut all the way back through Florida, which was accompanied by several nor'easters that happened during this winter. So the overall impacts of the 2013 winter included a persistent polar 
polar vortex that drove repeated cold snaps east of the Rocky Mountains. The West Coast suffered through a drought, setting the stage for severe water shortages. Additionally, the Great Lakes region endured a brutal winter with near record snowfall in cities like Chicago and Detroit. Lastly, the high latitude blocking patterns kept the storm track active, which led to frequent East Coast winter storms. Now, as with any climatological weather pattern, this will not be a carbon copy of 2013. So let's talk more about the temperature and precipitation anomalies that I am forecasting for the winter of 2025. Now, in my opinion, I do think the temperatures are going to be below average, especially across the northern plains, the Midwest, and the Ohio Valley, where we will likely have an overarching area that we are going to be seeing several cold fronts sweep across this area in a very frequent amount of time, which should lead to below average temperatures. And I do think we are going to have a brutal winter when it comes to cold weather, especially across the Dakotas and even perhaps across the Great Lakes. This is not super far off from what we saw in 2013 and 2014, but I do think it'll be a bit of a larger area where we do see the potential for well below average temperatures. On the other hand, I do think we are going to see that above average temperature spectrum actually be further to the north compared to 2013, where above average temperatures are likely across most of Florida, additionally southern and central Texas, and all up and down the west coast we will likely see a very warm winter in these areas. However, this does not mean snow is impossible to happen. Now, on the other hand, the precipitation when it comes to both rain and snowfall will likely be very different from 2013. And in my opinion, I actually think we are going to see above average rain and snowfall for a large chunk of the Midwest, Ohio Valley, and the Northeast, which is very different from 2013, where it was actually fairly dry for most of the country. But I do think we are going to see multiple storm systems, especially in the Ohio Valley and the Northeast over the period of December, January, and even into early February. This could set the stage for ice storms and even big winter storms. On the other hand, I do think drier than normal weather conditions are going to persist along the Gulf Coast and up and down the West Coast, which is very typical with any La Nina weather pattern. And even though we are not in La Nina, we are leaning slightly towards La Nina, which makes me believe that we are going to see below average rainfall and snowfall anywhere from the Gulf Coast all the way back up into the Pacific Northwest. So it's almost certain that we are going to have some big winter storms and Arctic blasts during the winter of 2025. But another thing that might not be so wintry is the risk of severe weather outbreaks. The late fall and early winter months are known as the second severe weather season, especially across the Southern Plains and the Dixie Alley. Gulf moisture combined with an active jet stream can unleash tornado outbreaks, sometimes comparable to spring severe weather outbreaks. For example, on November 17th of 2013, we saw a major tornado outbreak take place across the southeast. This tornado outbreak produced 73 tornadoes in a singular day. 30 of them were strong and two of them were violent. And with this winter looking somewhat similar to the winter of 2013, we cannot rule out a big outbreak like what we saw in November of 2013. So I think our severe weather season for this winter will look a little bit like this. I think our most significant area that we'll be watching for for the potential for numerous severe weather outbreaks will be across the lower Mississippi River Valley, anywhere from Louisiana and Arkansas saw all the way back into far western South Carolina. There will likely be a typical amount of severe weather that takes place anywhere in the red, which is southern Virginia, all the way back through north Texas, and even including areas like Houston and San Antonio. Now, lastly, that little yellow area that stretches from Maryland all the way back into far eastern New Mexico is where I anticipate at least a couple of severe weather events to take place. And though these might not be complete severe weather outbreaks, this is still a region that I would be staying weather aware for the potential for severe weather. And then anywhere outside of any of these areas, we have in the past seen very isolated and very rare severe weather events take place. In fact, we've seen some severe weather events in the month of December happen as far north as areas like Ohio. So do not be ruling out the potential for an isolated severe storm, even though it is highly unlikely. And even if you're in one of these shaded areas, do not be super scared this winter. Just make sure that you're staying weather aware and make sure you're subscribed to our channel as we go live for most severe weather events that take place across this region, especially if we have any elevated elevated risks of tornadoes. So to put this all together, let's go over some of the highlights that could be happening this winter in the United States, beginning with the overarching red area, which is across 
much of the Ohio Valley and even back into the Tennessee Valley, this is a region that I expect a winter battle zone to take place, where we will likely see the potential for at least a couple of ice and winter storms. And on top of that, a potential for a severe weather outbreak or two will be in play. On the other hand, the orange area goes all the way from Maryland and even down into Florida, all up and down the West Coast. And this is an area that I anticipate above average temperatures and below average rainfall to occur, which basically means we're not going to be seeing much in the way of wintry weather. However, we cannot rule out some isolated snow or ice, especially if you're back over in the mid-Atlantic. Next up is the light blue area, which is an area that I anticipate a lot of snow to fall, especially in the months of November and December. If you're anywhere over in Colorado, Wyoming, or Montana and have any plans to ski, it looks like it's going to be a pretty solid winter here as we are anticipating at least a couple of big winter storms to take place here, which should allow for a few good weeks of skiing. Now, one of the coldest colors on the map is that dark blue, which includes much of the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Great Lakes, and even across parts of the Northeast. And this is an area that I do anticipate frequent Arctic blasts to take place, and we will likely see a lot of these this winter, in addition to a few winter storms and plenty of lake effect snow occurring, especially across the Great Lakes. Lastly, if you are in the yellow, this is a region that I am anticipating that we will see at least a few nor'easters this winter. I think we'll actually see more than what we've seen over the last few years, and this should allow for a lot more snowfall, but if it is too warm, which sometimes happens earlier in the winters, that might not lead to a whole lot of snow, but I do think northeast is definitely going to have to be on alert for a few nor'easters during the months of December, January, and February. Across the board, this winter is shaping up to be a big one across the United States, but one thing we've not talked about yet is when the first snowfall is going to be happening across the United States. And this map right here gives us an idea of exactly when we can expect our first snowfall. Usually our first snowfall over in Montana happens as early as mid to late September, sometimes even in early October. Northern Plains and even back up into the Upper Peninsula of Michigan typically see their first snowfall in the month of October. November is usually when we start to see our first signs of big winter storms, and that could happen as early as November in parts of the Midwest and even across the Northeast. But December and January are usually the big months when we start to see really big winter storms take place. And that is sometimes when we see our first snowfall as far south as Texas, Oklahoma, and even across parts of Kentucky. Now, if you're anywhere shaded in white, we don't usually see snow in these areas. However, in 2024, we saw a big winter storm take place along the Gulf Coast. And even though I don't think that is going to happen this winter, that is something that we did see in the winter of 2013, which is one of those things that we've been comparing a lot to throughout this winter forecast. All in all, the winter of 2025 is looking like a big winter across the United States. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates. We are going to have frequent updates on winter storms. We'll have live coverages as well with tons of storm chasers and live cameras across the United States. Additionally, we will have another winter forecast in a month or two once we know more information about exactly what our weather pattern is going to be when it comes to our Enzo pattern. As sometimes we do see some changes last second, for right now it looks like it is going to be very close to neutral with a slight leaning towards La Nina, but that can sometimes change last second. If anything changes, we'll have another winter forecast coming up. So make sure you're staying tuned to the channel. Make sure to subscribe down below, and we'll see you all again in the next video.